Leesburg. Good morning. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, visiting friends to our beautiful Leesburg, Virginia, to our town of Leesburg Memorial Day observance. I would kindly ask you all if you can please silence your phones or put that equipment on vibrate. That will be appreciated so we can move forward. Please rise as the Loudoun County High School Naval Junior Reserve Officers Trainers Corps present the colors. Present the colors. Members from Scout Troop 1159 will now lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please remain standing as Navy Holloway from the Catoctin School of Music sings our national anthem. Baptist Church Silicon will now lead us in the invocation. Reverend. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, our nation pauses today to honor their memory of the men and women who died and made the ultimate sacrifice while serving in the United States of America military and of the service of that country. Today, we pause to honor those who have served and who have made the ultimate sacrifice and have given their lives for the freedom that we enjoy today. We pray you would have us all to look to you for strength, comfort, compassion, 
and guidance. Be with all who are serving in this nation as of today. May God bless all the families and bless all of you that's here today. Amen. Thank you for your inspiring message. Ladies and gentlemen, it is a true pleasure to introduce the mayor of Leesburg. Please welcome the Honorable Kelly Bird. Excuse me, I, there's lots of papers here. Um, good morning, and thank you very much for coming today. I want to thank uh, Reverend Trammo for being here with his inspiring words. Thank you very much. And Nev Holloway, oh my gosh, what a beautiful rendition. Thank you very much for what you just, how you just sang. And I want to recognize Loudoun County High School, um, School Navy ROTC, and the Boy Scout Troop of 1159. Thank you all for participating today. Uh, there are some uh, people I need to recognize today, uh, and it is my honor to introduce in the crowd, I saw Vice Mayor Martinez arrive. Oh, there he is, right there in the sun. Zach Cummings is here, Council Member Zach Cummings. Council Member Suzanne Fox. And Council Member Neil Steinberg. I don't see any other council members. Thank you all very much for coming today. Uh, I would like to recognize Supervisor Umstadt, who's there under the tree. I'd like to recognize, um, is, is, is uh, former Attorney General Mark Herring here? I thought I saw him in the crowd. There he is, yay! And the next names, I apologize already because I'm going to, I guarantee I'll mess them up. Suhas Supermana is the delegate by the tree. And Butra uh, Bibara is here, a, a Commonwealth attorney. Thank you all. We also have with us uh, our, our United States Congresswoman, Jennifer Wexton. And I see right in the front row uh, the uh, famous, well-known, highly regarded Joe May. <laughs> Have I missed anybody else? Raise your hand. I got everybody. Well, thank you very much for being here and thank you for your service. Um, I do want to thank all of you for being here on this beautiful day. It's important. I mean, it is really important for us as a people to always remember those who have made the greatest sacrifice, their lives for our freedom. We owe them a great deal. We may not remember their names, but we most certainly recognize the sacrifice they have made. In my family, on both sides, both the Burke, B-U-R-K-E, that's my maiden name, and Burke, B-U-R-K, my husband's side, there have, been a, there have been members of every branch of the uh, armed forces represented. My father served in the U.S. Navy on the USS Texas. My husband and, uh, and his uncle served in the Army. My uh, father's uncle, uh, my father-in-law's uncle died uh, in an uh, air fight over France. He served in the Air Force. My brother was a proud, proud Marine. My niece served in the Air Force and my nephew in the Coast Guard. So all of the branches are represented in my family, and I know the sacrifice that individual members have made, but also the sacrifice that families make. To all of them, I say thank you. We are here to honor those who have given their life to our to, in service of our country, and I am so honored to be here and celebrate this event with you today. I'm pleased to note that for this year's Memorial Day, the new World War I memorial plaque has been installed. You may recall that the original plaque on the, on the statue discriminated against the African American veterans. It separated them. Through the efforts of many committee members, county staff, and businesses, the replacement plaque with the exact replica of the artwork from the former was made possible. Several members of that group that made this happen are with us today. We have P P uh, Peter Capilano, uh, Phil Rusticelli and Judge Horn 
and Ray Pel uh, Belpesh. Thank you. See, I told you I'd end up messing somebody's name up. So I want to thank them for make, making a, correcting an error that was done a long time ago, and we proudly have it on display, so I hope you'll take the time to go see it. Again, I want to thank you all for being here today, and it is my honor to introduce um, our speaker, our, uh, our, the Honorable um, Jennifer Wexton. Congressman Jennifer Wexton has been serving the people of Northern Virginia and the Shenandoah Valley for over two decades. First as a prosecutor, an attorney, an uh, advocate for abused children, and a state senator. During her five years in the General Assembly, she passed more than 40 bipartisan bills, all while serving in the minority. Now in Congress, Congresswoman Wexton has found success in working across the aisle to deliver results to better the lives of Virginia's children and families. Congressman Wexton serves on the powerful House Appropriation Committee, where she is responsible for securing funding for all the government spending programs. And we were able to benefit from that. We had gotten funding from the federal government for the bridge, the pedestrian bridge, over the creek at Lawson Road. It's a very dangerous crossing, and to have the opportunity to create this bridge so people can safely cross and go to the WNOD trail is not a small event, and we appreciate the support of the Congresswoman. Specifically, her subcommittee, yes, give her applause for that. Specifically, her subcommittee assignments focus on fu funding for transportation and housing, foreign operations, and the legislative branch. Waxton is also a member of the House Budget Committee, which provides oversight for the legislative process. Uh, a native of the Washington area, Waxton graduated with honors from the University of Maryland in College Park and earned her law degree from the College of William and Mary in, in Williamsburg. Any William and Mary graduates? Yay! <laughs> she lives in Leesburg with her husband, two sons, and two rescued Labrador retrievers. It is my pleasure to welcome Congresswoman Jennifer Wexton. Thank you so much, Mayor Burke. Most people, most people like me a lot more when they hear about the rescue labs. Um, Thank you, it's an honor to be with you this Memorial Day. As Franklin, President Franklin Delano Roosevelt said, those who enjoy such privileges as we enjoy forget in time that men have died to win them. Memorial Day is not about barbecues or pool openings or big sales at the mall. It's a time we take each year to honor the more than one million heroes who lost their lives in service to our nation since its birth. Those we remember and honor today were patriots who were fathers, mothers, brothers, sisters, neighbors and friends. They were extraordinary, ordinary people who put our country first. I especially want to recognize our Gold Star families. Our nation owes these families our eternal gratitude. As these families carry the loss of their loved ones every day, we're here today to be with them as neighbors and friends and join them in remembrance. On Memorial Day, we reflect on the generations of Americans who, had, who laid down their lives for the preservation of our democratic ideals and values. It's our responsibility to honor their sacrifice by ensuring we do all we can to preserve the freedoms they died protecting, both here and across the globe. This Memorial Day is a powerful reminder for all of us that our current fight to uphold our democracy is not a unique one. Those who have died for our freedom died for democracy and the right of self-determination. It's a fight that we're seeing right now in Europe as the Ukrainian people defend their country and democracy from Putin's brutal war of aggression and oppression. It reminds us that as we are sitting here right now, in this moment, others are dying, fighting and dying to live in a country that has the rights we are blessed with to live with every day. We cannot and must not take these freedoms for granted. Being here today, taking the time to honor and reflect on the sacrifice generations of American service members have made is an important way to demonstrate our appreciation for those freedoms. As a member of Congress, it is always a top priority of mine that we take care of our veterans, service members, and their families. I want to acknowledge the battle that so many of those who have served in combat carry with them when they return home. The battle where nearly 22 veterans die by suicide each day is one we cannot allow to continue. Helping them heal the injuries that they've sustained, both physical and mental, is an absolute necessity. That's why we're working hard in Congress to improve services for our veterans, to offer help before it is even requested, to finally end the stigma and isolation that so many are feeling. 
my team and I are help to have help to hear and hear our help to my team and I are here, here to help however we can. We're able to connect Virginia veterans and their families with the services they need, the benefits they've earned, and help them navigate the VA processes. Thank you to all the men and women who have served our country in uniform. But as John F. Kennedy has said, as we express our gratitude, we must never forget the that the highest appreciation is not to utter the words, but to live by them. We must all go forth to honor the ideals of democracy, equality, and justice for all for which our country stands and the sacrifices made by generations of American men and women to protect them. May God bless our service members, veterans, and their families, and may God bless the United States of America. Thank you. Thank you, Congressman Wexton. Um, I have noticed um, uh, uh, that Michelle Thomas, uh, the president of the NAACP, walked in. Is she in the crowd? Raise your hand. There she is, over there. <laughs> and I see that um, uh, uh, Rizwan Jacob from the Adams Center is here. Thank you, thank you both very much for coming. Um, I have the honor of introducing Lieutenant General Bruce T. Crawford, retired. He, uh, Ms., uh, Lieutenant General Crawford lives in Beacon Hill, just west of Leesburg. We won't hold that against you, but <laughs> think about moving, you know? <laughs> uh, his wife, Diane, and he has two sons, Bruce Jr. and Corey. He serves as a director on the board of the George C. Marshall International Center, based right here in Leesburg. He's originally from Columbia, South Carolina was commissioned as an officer in the United States Army after graduating from South Carolina State University and taking part in their ROTC program. He holds a Bachelor of Science in Electrical Engineering, has a Master's of Science in Administration from Central Michigan University, and a Master's of Science of National Resource Strategy from the Industrial College of the Armed Forces. Do you need to get a couple more degrees? Wow. Very <laughs> During the incredible, distinguished 35-year career with the U.S. Army, General Crawford has served all over the world and most served as the Army's Chief Information Officer. General Crawford is known for engaging those under his command and his self, selfless mentoring of many soldiers. The Black Engineers of the, of the Year Association named General Crawford their 2020 Black Engineer of the Year. He has been awarded the Bronze Star and the Distinguished Service Medal, among other medals. He is retired from the U.S. Army in 2022 and currently serves as the Senior Vice President with Jacob Engineering. Would you please welcome Lieutenant General Bruce Crawford. All right, good morning, everyone. Good morning. All right, there we go. We're in the right place. Uh, she, she mentioned, uh, Mayor, thank you very much for the, uh, for the warm introduction. And she mentioned a couple of degrees and things of that nature. Th those things aren't important. What's really important is over the last two years, I got an opportunity to become a grandfather uh, for the first time. All right? And I, I don't know who said this, but somebody really smart said this, that if they'd have known grandkids were so much fun, they would have had them first. All right? And so uh, you know, spend a lot of time uh, with young Brent Elizabeth, who's two years old, and young Isaac, who's now 10 months old. So they're keeping us busy. So I'm honored to be here with you this morning. I want to take the opportunity, I know there's several, so I won't go through the entire list, but to recognize, obviously we have, we have a member of, uh, member of Congress uh, leading us here today, but I wanted to recognize our elected officials who are joining us here from both local and state. Very, very important, uh, your leadership uh, here in the country. So thank you for being here. All right, and uh, again, Ma Mayor Burks, this is probably about the third time that I've had an opportunity to meet you. So good to see you again. And uh, I'll let my wife Diane know that we're moving out of Beacon Hill. <laughs> Although we're here this morning to pay tribute to those uh, who served and made the ultimate sacrifice, and that's been mentioned. I'd also be remiss if I didn't also recognize those in attendance who are Gold Star families, uh, veterans and their families, who are part of the 1% in this great nation uh, who made the conscious decision to serve. So I won't ask much of this audience this morning, but I wanted to once again ask for a loud and thunderous round of applause for not only our veterans, but also for our first responders uh, who are here, who have really carried the torch for us over the last 24 months of the pandemic. Thank you all very much.
So Memorial Day has a special place in the heart of our country, partly because this day, like no other holiday, epitomizes who we are as a nation and what we stand for as Americans. Originally known as Decoration Day, it originated in the years following the Civil War and became an official federal holiday. I believe it was in 1971. And so President John F. Kennedy once said, and I quote and paraphrase for one reason, a nation reveals itself not only by the men and women uh, it produces, but also by the men and women it honors. The men and women it remembers, unquote. Today, we remember and honor the service members, those who wore the cloth of this great nation, the heroic men and women who died while in military service. It's fitting that our nation chooses the last Monday in May as Memorial Day, because this day marks the beginning of the summer season. And what could be more fitting, a more fitting tribute to the men and women who died in the service of their country than the day that gives birth to a season filled with hope a season filled with optimism and a season filled with the aspirations and dreams that no matter how difficult the circumstances, that tomorrow, ladies and gentlemen, will bring a brighter day. So over the last few days while out running uh, the Old Dominion Trail, and at 59, I still do that about four days a week, uh, near my home in Beacon Hill, I was thinking about what I might say to you all this morning. You know, what is it that this great town of Leesburg needs to hear uh, from its, you know, one of its former leaders. Having had my own very close brush with mortality in 2003, while serving in the 82nd Airborne Division on a convoy near Fallujah, Iraq. And what, you know, I, I often thought of, you know, what would have become of my family and how the nation would have recognized my service. Now, fortunately, because I'm standing here today, it's clear that that day in December of 2003 was not my day to die. The good Lord had a different plan, but I can't help but wonder what would have been my final thoughts in reflection of my service had things turned out differently. First, I would have been thinking about the fate of my family and would they have been cared for. I would have also been wondering if my service had been in vain. Would the nation remember? I believe I would have also uh, have wanted to know the fate of my 700 paratroopers who were under my command at that time in the 82nd Airborne Division and their families. And last but not least, I would have probably been thinking about what advice I would give to those who were left behind. Now I have no idea uh, what would have happened that day in December had things played out differently. But my sense is, given the fact that like many other Americans, that I chose the life of service, and because I chose the life of service, uh, that my final advice would have been to never, ever, ever forget. Today, we reflect on those who ne never left the battlefields for their service and sacrifice. And we live in gratitude each and every day for the precious gift that they have given to us all. The military service member has been referred to by many as the great paradox. Uh, in the struggle for peace and freedom. They are ordered to rise before the sun so that we can watch the sunset. They are ordered to stand at attention so that we can sit wherever we want. They are ordered to charge the hill so that we can build a house on one. They are ordered to fight to uphold democracy around the world so that our sons and daughters can live freely anywhere in the world. As we gather this morning, our charge is to never forget those who paid the ultimate sacrifice. Not just because of what they did, not just because of who they were, but the reason we should never forget is simply because as a nation, ladies and gentlemen, this is who we are. So on Memorial Day, I'm always reminded of the fact that so few gave so much for so many. I believe it was author Elmer Davis who once said, this nation will remain the land of the free only so long as it's the home of the brave. So in closing, it's my hope and my belief that the sacrifices of those who have died for our country will never, ever, ever be forgotten by our grateful nation. Because there is no greater honor than to give honor to those who have fallen. 
The patriots we memorialize here today gave their last full measure of devotion. Not so we might mourn them, though we do. Not so that our nation might honor their sacrifice, although it does. They gave their lives so that we might live ours. Everything that we hold precious in this country was made possible by Americans who gave their all. And because of them, our nation is stronger, safer, and will always remain a beacon of hope and a beacon of freedom around the world. So ladies and gentlemen, I wanted to take the opportunity, and I promised that I would be brief here this morning, uh, as we pay tribute to those who gave the ultimate sacrifice and their families. So I thank you all for being here today because you've been, it could have been a lot of other places, but you made the conscious decision to be right here uh, paying tribute uh, to our service members and their families. So may God continue to bless the fallen and all those who serve. May God watch over their families in this community and may God continue to bless the United States of America. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Don't go too far. Can I ask you to come back up to this podium, along with Mayor Burke? On behalf of the Tongue of Leesburg, I would like to present you with this small token of our appreciation for sharing your time and your thoughts with us today. Thank you. The, the wife is not with you today, but we just want to give us a small token of our appreciation to her for keeping you on the good and narrow. <laughs> and, and I just got complaining, the darling complaining that we had too many flowers in the yard. So. <laughs> no, thank you all very much. All right. At this time, I'd like to ask those involved with the reflame ceremony to step forward. Mayor Burke, General.